style. Um, and so um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted by a remote participation. So um, call to order of the TAC meeting for today. And um, uh, let's get started um, with any um, announcements. Tracy, do you have some? Oh, Tracy, do you have any announcements? Oh, I can't hear you. Nope. <laughs> There we go. Tracy. There, got it. Okay, does that work? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks okay, like good. there's two uh, attendees. Um, Great. I don't know, Eve and Holden are in the waiting room. I don't think I can be. Yeah, so for the attendees, you don't always have to promote the attendees to panelists. If you guys right. want to do that just as a habit, you can, but the attendees, you can see when they raise their hands and everything and then allow them to speak. So it's entirely up to you guys. I don't really know. I don't think you guys have really discussed that at all. I went ahead and did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we only ever have. Yeah limited number and it feels better just to have everyone on the same. Yeah. Literally. I mean, sort of if we were in person, right? We let people mm -hmm. participate. We don't, we're not locked out. Yeah. And people get tired of being stuck in anonymous attendee land out there in all these Zoom meetings. Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> um, maybe no, no, maybe nobody else minds. So, um, um, Amber, I did, um, just because I know in case you sign off later, I did have a quick question is we typically try to keep our minutes, our meetings to 90 minutes. And could we just advertise like when we post the meetings, could we just say that they're the 90 minutes? Just so members of the public who are looking will know that. Um, so no other committee really does a time ending thing. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, it's just kind of sectioned off like in two hour blocks just uh, in case okay. you guys over. Yeah. So that's fine. Either way. Yeah. I didn't know. Cause it always shows up. It says a start and end time. And I think, I mean, officially, I think some of the other town <laughs> meetings do too, though they perpetually go over. So yeah, just... I mean, <laughs> I was just in. A, I was just. Uh, you know, somebody was talking about it today, and they said, "Oh, and you guys always have two-hour meetings." And I was like, "Well, they're actually ninety minutes, or we try." So, um, anyway, okay, thanks. Um, okay, a couple of quick things is. Um, so I was listening in. I had missed part of it, but the uh, town TSO town services and outreach committee that they are now reviewing the parking permit proposal. Um, it's going to be referred by them to the Transportation Advisory Committee. It has not been referred yet. And I did ask the TSO members for some guidance about what it is exactly that they would like TAC to weigh in on. A big component of that plan has to do with some of the financial parts of it. And I don't really know if we consider that to be in our purview. Um, so, and they, yeah, and then they're planning to have their public hearing with some of their recommendations um, by March 10th. So that's gonna be coming up pretty soon. Um, I did, I wanted to just mention too, I mean, I know I circulated around to people. Um, one thing I did notice is that in the list of the places to have permit parking, they basically kept the list as it is now, more or less, and it also included North Pleasant Street on the west side of Kendrick Park on the west side of the street, like where we've already moved and the council has approved changing it over to the east side and eliminating parking on the west side. So I did mention that to the TSO member. So the TSO committee chair at this point is Dorothy Pam. And um, I mean, let me see if I can remember all the members. So it's um, Shalini Ball Mill. Um, Anna, uh, the the Galtier, um, Annika Lopes, and Anika Lopes, and um, 
Andy Steinberg is still on there. He's the only remaining committee member from the last term of the TSO and of course, Dorothy Pan. So those are the five members. Um, I wanted to mention also uh, sidewalk shoveling. I know we've talked about that at our meetings before. Can everybody hear me? Okay, because yeah. I like, I don't know. Okay, good. Because sometimes people look frozen. I don't know whether I'm frozen or you're frozen. Okay, so sidewalk shoveling. Um, you know, with the recent snowfall, some of the sidewalks are pretty impassable and some of the curb cuts are impassable and the bus stops and all of it. Um, so I actually was trying to make a complaint or like raise a concern about the sidewalks um, in one particular area recently. And I didn't really know how to do it. Um, you know, under the bylaws, stuff is supposed to, the fines are um, given out by the police department. So what I found out in the end is that you're supposed to report them to the police department and that um, you should just call the dispatch number if that's what, if you have a complaint. So that was news to me and it was really hard to find that on the website, but I got an email from a police department official and that's what they told me. Um, also, so I'm actually hoping that they can make it a little easier to do that on the website. Um, also, I just wanted to mention, um, I had been supposed to go to the DAC meeting next week, um, but they, I think they've canceled that meeting now and they're just have their next meeting in March. But one thing that they're currently looking at is the details of the design plan at Kendrick Park. And they were gonna be reviewing that, including the parking plan and the, bike plan and sidewalks and everything. I know. Gilford, if you had any quick comments on that, I know that's coming from your staff, right? Yes, okay. Is this preliminary at this point? Oh, we can't hear you. I have to find my cursor, it was wandering somewhere else. No, I don't okay. have any updates, it's just, it's coming. So one thing I noticed when I was sent a copy of the preliminary stuff is that currently the way the, the drawings are laid out is that they're saying there's an eight foot wide sidewalk path on the west side of the street with four feet of it designated for pedestrians and four feet of it designated for um, bicyclists. So I think that the DAC may have concerns about that you know, depending on how separated the bicyclists and the pedestrians are. And that's something that I think we'd be interested in too. So, um, okay. So those are all my kind of quick things. All right, any other announcements, anybody? Oh, wait, and I did have one more announcement is that the town manager and the resident advisory committee um, they are doing interviews this week for potential TAC members. Yay. <laughs> and so um, they will hopefully, the town manager's timeframe, I believe after they're done the interviews, it, the recommendation has to go to TSO and then it will go to the council and that would be towards the end of February. So hopefully by March, we will have at least one or two new members. So, yay, okay. yay. You have, an Hi. you have an interview, right? Scheduled? No. Sorry, did you say Holden? I... Yeah, do you have an, are you are you getting interviewed next week? Excellent. Uh, yeah, on, on Friday. Great. This, this Friday. Oh, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Tomorrow, oh, yes. Great. Uh, I have to I have to leave at six. I know I'm not a committee member or anything, but uh, I'll disappear at six today, unfortunately. But. Thank you. Well, anyway, well, anyway, Holden, thank you for hanging on during that long process of waiting for an interview. <laughs> so, okay. And thank you for joining us today. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So Kim, do you want to take over? The yeah. So we have some um, minutes to get through um, to approve. We have the January minutes from the January 6th meeting and those from the January 20th meeting that were um, emailed to us. Um, earlier today, I believe. So, um, so I haven't looked at them yet. Has everybody looked at them? No. I just, I mean, I just had one correction. On the January 20th, at the very bottom, next meetings will be February 3rd, and it says February 17th, but I think we decided to meet on the 10th. 
Yes, because, we did. Uh, Bernie and I are. That's available. correct. Yes, yeah. we did decide yeah. to do that. Yes, which is next week. So. Yeah. Correct. Yes. We'll be busy. Okay. Yeah, I had mentioned that to Amber, but maybe that got lost in translation. So, all right. And if anybody that what that does mean too is that means that um, I need to send Amber the agenda by tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. if anybody has any pressing agenda items, or we could talk about it at the end of the meeting. Yeah. So, thanks. Well, let's just wait till the end. Yeah, of course. Let's see what we got. Okay. There. Well, unless anybody has any other comments, uh, I would move to accept the minutes of January 6th and January 20th. Second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tracy, are you voting? Yeah, well, I haven't actually read them, so I'm just going to like abstain or whatever, okay. but, but I'm sure they're fine. So I, just, I didn't um, get you. That is three votes for. What, is Bernie, what does Bernie say? Oh, wait, I'm Bernie. sorry, Bernie. I am not. I don't know why I didn't have you in the loop. So, and one. No, and, I'm, I'm fine. So four, yes, one abstention. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And um, the next agenda item is um, continuing business of our draft crosswalk guidelines. Um, so in the last meeting, we pretty much went through these. Guilford said that he would um, add a few details. I thought I saw those in the email, but I can't seem to find them now. Did you, those were sent out, right? update amber yeah. sent it out this morning guilford would you like to pull it up on your screen or oh right, right. i have it okay i have it yeah. hold on let me move you guys over here so i did a little more, I kind of made it read a little better, I thought, but you guys can tell me if I'm hosed up or not. Um, so I actually kind it's of- Typo. <laughs> where- Red line. Devices. Devices. <laughs> oh, devices. Yeah. Can we just scroll down? Not yeah, this is good. Because <laughs> that preamble is new, right? I mean, it's it's good. Um, you guys did the purpose. You changed that last right. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I made a I made a quick modification to the definition. It made it a little yeah. clearer. It took a couple of things out that were weird. Um, I moved this installation of crosswalks. That was at the note at the very bottom. Uh -huh. I moved it up here. It just didn't fit well at the end, I thought. Yeah, that seems good. Mm -hmm. That seems great, yeah. And then I, um, whoops. Well, and I like that you made it a little more general because I think you were referring to certain chapters of the MUTCD and if stuff moves around, then it's like out of date, so. Yeah. yeah. And then the evaluation has to stay the same. Uh -huh. um, and then these are the existing crosswalks. I just left those pictures in. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't label them. Do you want? Do you want to label them, or it's like existing crosswalks or something? Sure. But we've already made them better, so. Not right, the, the, one, the on, one on the left. No. But the one this on the one, right is better. Yeah. 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 This one's better. This one's this one's next year. Um, I just kind of I didn't change uh -huh. much of this mm -hmm. now that looks good and then I kind of changed up so recommendations below are the following da, 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 pattern I made it actually bigger so you can see it better yep 
materials. I talked about the materials and mm -hmm. I mean, I just kind of made these like you can read it and it makes sense. No, oh, great. Now I, I went through it when I got it earlier today and it seemed fine other than the okay. devices. Gilford, on the materials, um, it seems like we keep hearing that they keep inventing new materials. So would you want us like um, say something like or other appropriate, you know, materials for cost effective and long lasting markings or something like that? Um, we could, but these are the three that are there now. And I don't, there's not much change in hasn't been much change and I don't see anything really coming down the pipe on materials. Well, that's fine, I think. Well, I mean, but like you use bricks, for example. Yeah, yeah so we don't I never, use that anymore. Never want to use that again. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do but what are the But what are the ones across North Pleasant Street? Like, what are they? That's the thermoplastic. It's thermoplastic. Uh, got it, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we covered the ones that we really want to use, which is that thermoplastic. So. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and these are, after all, these are our guidelines. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the paint is the cheapest way to do it. And it's always going to be the cheapest way, but it just has to be done all the time. Um, thermoplastic and epoxy last longer. And the, the epoxy is the only one that's got any new, any new, um, innovation coming to it right now. Okay. Um, I put the Atkins light in and took out the UMass light. Oh. So, so I do have a question about that one then. So are we saying, because lighting is in this section, are we saying that all crosswalks will have lighting? We say that, yes. And, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, is that true? Do all of our current crosswalks have lighting, like even outside of downtown? Some of the ones downtown are almost, lighting. they do, but they're different. Every intersection is supposed to have a street light. So if you have a crosswalk at a street light, if you have a crosswalk at an intersection, you have a street light. Okay. But it may not be where you really want it. So we just move this crosswalk to the street light. Well, then you can say you want it, you need to enhance it, and you go down to the enhance things, and you can use yeah, them. Yeah, for sure. Oh, good. And you added the section about signalized intersections. That's great. Yes. Um, we, we could add some more in there, but I think I got the button, the button, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, pedestrian activated button. The buttons have to be audible. Um, there needs to be a visual countdown for the hearing impaired. That's great. Um, the standard walk, don't walk symbols. And you got the Holden. medians from Portland, Oregon, I see. Holden has a question. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think I made a similar comment last, last time and last revision, but just wondering uh, about maintenance, Tracy, especially with your comment about um, cutouts not always getting plowed. I, I don't know if you know, either directing people, if there's already a maintenance document for crosswalks and sidewalks, uh, just say, you know, reference that or just saying, um, you know, the town will consider any ongoing maintenance obligations for crosswalks. What do you... Comment. Mostly thinking about snow or if the, I don't know if the sidewalk, you know, with the bricks, if that's coming up, but I guess bricks aren't maybe going to be as much of an issue anymore. But. but I guess actually on that same sort of vein is the idea that, I mean, do we want to have something with the crosswalks that, that um, saying that a standard would be to have curb cuts like at each end of the crosswalk or something? Like if well, there's side, no, if there's a, if there's a, if no, but I'm oh. saying if there's adjacent sidewalk or something. So that that kind of falls into the ADA requirements. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Um, where are they? So I guess 
Oh, and the other uh, maintenance item I was thinking of was the signage. Those signs always move all over the place or disappear um, as the sidewalks age. Which signs? The 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 yellow kind of rubberized um, in section four. There's a picture of one on page five. Are you yeah, talking those, about the oh, yeah, mid go, crosswalk yeah. like mm -hmm. stanchion things? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Under four. I mean, they just have to be moved because of the uh, plow, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. They also they look. I guess they're popular in fraternity houses. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get them back every year? At the we end get of the year? some. <laughs> I need a police raid to find all the missing signs. Well, I used to have a little, you know, one of those little fluorescent men, like those slow down plastic, you know, pedestrian men. Like, and um, somebody came up to my house once we were like doing outside yard work and they pulled up and they like put the man in the back seat of the car and drove away. <laughs> 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 and we found it at a student rental later and we took it back and then it got taken again. So. <laughs> poor, poor person. But okay. So they actually have um, they actually have scavenger hunts in the students do. And on their list are traffic signs, certain street name signs, traffic cones, traffic barrels, and a, a whole assortment of things that you can walk around and find on the streets that are supposed to take. Um, it's, quite, it's quite fun. <laughs> yeah, really great for you guys, I bet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you may keep scrolling down. Okay. Um, so then, then I talked about the optional enhancement toolbox. I kind of gave a mm -hmm. little sentence what this is. And then I gave I broke it into two, it, it was broken into two sections. So this is downtown and village centers. Um, the first part is very the same, but then we talk about this pattern here and the, using this pattern. That looks great, yeah. That's okay. so yeah. And then we talked about the sign that Holden was just talking about. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then lighting, when we start talking about adequate lighting and so forth, then we could do more, so. We can talk about the flashing bollard is lighting as well. And then raised crosswalks. And then additional crate crosswalk safety was the next option. So this could be used anywhere. And it kind of it follows the same guidelines. Wait, Gilford, can you just scroll back up a moment? Just to the beginning of the section. Whoop. I'm sorry, could you just scroll up, like scroll More? back towards the beginning of the document a little bit? No, just where you would, um, well, just in terms of those additional, oh, yeah, no, it's fine. It was just going fast, <laughs> okay. Oh, Thanks. sorry. No, it's good, I just, yeah, it's fine. I had just wanted to just see the raised crosswalk part. So the bollards and the raised crosswalk. Yeah. Okay. So I think would you want to uh, would you want to say may may should maybe be two words there raised crosswalk. Well, maybe not maybe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay. Well, and I guess There's better visibility to maybes. yeah, better visibility to motorists, right, and to provide traffic calming. I think. Go go down. Yeah. Yeah, so Guilford, I was right there. I would just edit it slightly. I would add an S to the end of motorists, better visibility to motorists. Well, it's also providing better visibility 
to pedestrians, of course, and and it's to provide, yeah. Traffic. Okay. Right. Well, I kind of I kind of call out uh, but the bump outs is actually farther down as the yeah. The, the the addition for the pedestrian because it sticks you farther out into the road yep. uh -huh. whereas the raised crosswalk raises you up more so the driver can see you sure maybe motorists and cyclists well technically a cyclist is a motorist mm -hmm. i can put cyclist in there if you want they're a vehicle mm -hmm. they're a vehicle i didn't know that that was yeah leg motors yeah. all right so I, I mean the to vehicles. Yeah, I mean to yeah. Well, to vehicles. That includes a skateboarder and scooter guy too, I guess. Yeah. And it's just thinking of the uh, crossing guard in Northampton, Florence, who got hit last week because the person yes. driving the truck couldn't see him. Oh boy! It's one of those, yeah. you know. Uh, suburban assault vehicle. Um, so it's really like, high, is that? Really high, yeah. Yeah, yeah they have to do that because it's, it's, it's a manly thing to do. Yeah. Well, and they're working on um, improving. I mean, that was in the same vicinity of the high school where there was the other, there was the fatality of the cyclists, right? So mm -hmm. they're trying to work on a lot of improvements in that area. So, so actually it should be like better visibility for vehicles yep yes i think so yeah and to provide a traffic calming you could device. just say to provide traffic calming you know because yep. yeah i have to go go early today but thank you all see you holden thank you thanks holden okay All right, now I want to keep going down. Yeah, please. Thank you. And then these are additional ones. The lighting, yeah. Okay. And then this is where the RFBs come in. I guess would you would you maybe have something added there too about like um signage even if it's not flashing signage you know approaching the crosswalks well that's actually supposed to be at every crosswalk is signage so that's kind of required oh, okay. for a crosswalk mm -hmm. all right so we're going to signage signage with light lights to grab your attention and what about pavement markings like in some cases about crosswalks use pavement markings do you do that much um we try to stay away from that but we could add it in here well i mean it's under optional right so there are some of those like shark's teeth or whatever right around amherst a little bit yeah that's to tell you to yield um okay lighting raise crosswalk i mean i guess you could yeah your your number goes from two to seven yeah <laughs> well actually let's uh so we could just make, say, go ahead. Well, I didn't make this, so the formatting is really weird. I'm trying to figure it out. So addition. All right, I can add additional payment markings. I think that's fine. You know, I mean, again, we're in the optional area, right? So, yes. Yeah. I'll add that in that we can do things like put pedestrian uh, crosswalk ahead painted on the road. Uh -huh. Is there a particular reason why we don't tend to do that already? Just uh, technically. We paint it and then we spend the rest of the year sanding it off is usually why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, I mean, would you, what, what would be the markings? You wouldn't actually say 
pedestrian. I don't know. Um, I'll look it up and get. I mean, I mean, I was thinking of the shark's teeth, but um, you know, any anything that is sort of. Well, we're the guys are and supposed to paint the shark teeth with with okay. the crosswalks. And sometimes too, there's well, that's signage, but like the share the road kind of signage or the um, the chevrons, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Um, all right, so then I talk about the bump outs. And so yeah. our me, you have the picture with the medians, right? So do we do we include medians explicitly listed? Oh, you medians, do down there. Okay. Yeah, they're number oh. eight, which is wrong. So okay. And then no more two no more two foot ones. Well. That just didn't work yeah, out. Yeah, well. I mean, I would I would probably take that one if if we can find another picture. I, well, I, it does have the Pine Street RFB, I know, but I just the median so terrible. <laughs> but. Yeah, so this is what we would do. So this is like this is five feet. That looks so much better than that tiny one. May, yeah, so again, may that's where B. you would have, yeah, the maybe. Yeah, may and B should be two words. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm an engineer. <laughs> and, and is there a reason why you have the, uh, the slash mark after traffic in areas of high pedestrian traffic and where the street is wide? That can all be one sentence, right? Yep. Um, yeah, it could be. And you could have a comma after wide. Right. In areas of high pedestrian traffic and where the street is wide. Medians may be used. Uh, I think there was a vehicle in there. Oh, well. Oh, that's good. Idea. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that yeah. makes sense then. Mm hmm. And then a comma after wide. Yes. Um, after wide? Yes. Yes. When where the street is wide, comma. Mm -hmm. Medians may be used to provide refuge for pedestrians crossing the roadway. Median shall be a minimum of five feet. Yes. I think that's really important. And then. So that would be number six. No turn on. Yeah. Right. And then I cannot find a, a good picture of a sign. I'm still working on that. No turn on red sign, you mean? Well, the lighted sign, I can find the other one, but a, a lighted sign that's not got a lot of other stuff around it. So I can use the one on Main Street that uh, by the, the one uh, in Main and Main and Triangle. Right, by the pizza parlor. Well, I could use that one. I was trying to find I, a clean one. I, ha I have one I like, Guilford, from another town. Um, um, I can show if you want. Well, I can show you. <laughs> All right. And I think Holden, Holden's right. We should put in up here in the, in, in the requirements about um, accessibility. I don't think it really, it doesn't really say it very well. Looking back over it. And oh, in terms of, well, it says the purpose is related to encourage safety, accessibility, consistency. Gilford, what's your email address? Um, it's my last name, which is Mooring. Yeah. G and then Amherst M at AmherstMA.gov. Yeah. I found your picture. Oh, I have a I have a picture I really like when I was talking about that. But you're not gonna. I mean, with the no turn on red, are those mainly going to be the signage? They're not actually going to be like the flashing lights or anything. Um, well, I was going to put both. Okay. I mean, I'll send I'll send the picture that I like too. 
All right. And I think I, I might say something a little, I'll, I'll think of something to put in there about ADA a little more. So it doesn't seem you like say it's that not they there. will meet to the best of their abilities or because you don't want to, you don't want to tie yourself to places where what you were saying the other day, right? There are areas in town where it's impossible pretty much to provide certain parts of that. Yeah, I mean, in this, in this, this sentence here, we, um, the installation, we talk about design installation enhancements will follow the MUCTD and the Mass DOT design guidelines, which include, I, I can say, which include accessibility. Yeah, I think that's the best right. way to put it. Yeah, 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 yeah so. absolutely. Which, fo you know, which focus on safety and accessibility. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Good. Yes. Should guidelines be little G or big G? Well, if they're going to be little G, then design should be little D too. Is is the doc? Is there a document that's called Mass Dot Design Guidelines? There is. Yeah, then it's capital. So I'll that, leave it then. Then, then they yeah. can remain capitals. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is Marcus's picture. <laughs> yeah, this has been the, we did this so long ago and I forgot actually who did it. Oh, that's a bit small. <laughs> Not that small in the uh, in the email. <laughs> I don't think any. I did just grab it off. No, no bigger it, than that. Well, let me. Uh, I'm going to save it and then put it in. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you to find a bigger one of it. Send it back. <laughs> Do you want one that's like got the arrow and then the no turn on, you know, like a red slash through it, or do you want it saying out in words, no turn on red? Um, no turn on red with the words is, oh, there, there it is. There it is. Hey. Yeah, that, that's what I had. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can grab you the other one. They're both stuck. Oh, no, this one's like getting crappy about it. So it's requiring I pay for it. That's not happening. <laughs> Actually, that looks like ours. Yeah, that's why. That's why I kind of liked it because it did look like the one. But yeah, it's an it's a stop. Because we have because we have the green light, it turns on too. <laughs> uh, it should be no turning on red quotation marks, then sign with a uh, lowercase. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because it just says no turning on red. That's right, yeah. What is this? That was the, what you were doing earlier. Just delete it. Well, it's the same thing. I guess I did. Yeah. Or it doesn't always make it easy to do that stuff. Yeah. Pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. Here we go. And then we'll just put a regular sign in there, and then that'll be it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want me to put a date in here at the bottom in the footer? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, wait, is so that the end? We're at the end? Mm -hmm. We're at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we could also just say, you know, um, maybe on for the 
footer on the right, we could just say tack draft or something. Well, it is. A, it's not a draft, right? It's our sure, final. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. So yeah, say final. Taff, taff, yeah. Just say. Yeah. Or tack approved or something. I don't know. We could. Well, I think well, we tack version two point oh is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even say that it's 2.0. I would just say, you know, TAC. Okay. We could just say TAC even, right? Final or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Is, so do we good. want to um to go ahead and, and um, officially vote on this? Yes, please. Yes, please. So um, does someone want to make a, um, make a, I can't, why can't I think the word? A motion. 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 <laughs> I, I, uh, I move to accept the crosswalk standards as amended uh, with the inclusion of the the photo in section six, the no turn on red. Um, and yeah. I will second. So, so I have a qu question. With our motion, do we need to say where it should go after us? Or, Guilford, would you just send uh, us to the town manager and just say these are TAC, these are DPW reviewed and TAC approved? Crosswalk standards. And then it would go to the count. Is that how it would proceed, Guilford? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we first have to accept the document, right? And right. then we can yeah. decide where it goes. Yeah. Right. So, no, that's true. Uh, just... is, are, is there before? Um, uh, voting on this motion, is there any other discussion? None heard, then all those in favor? Um, I, I can't see every, well, let me see. Hi, we're all, aye. No, we're all sharing. Aye, yeah, great. We're all here. Five of us. Yep. Okay. okay. So and, is, and Eve uh, raised, raised her hand too. <laughs> unanimous um, acceptance yep. of the- Super. Proposal. Yeah, I didn't participate because I was in like the previous six rounds of the discussion of this <laughs> document. <laughs> Already been in support many times. All right. So great, it's approved. So yay, now, approved document. Um, yeah, will it go That's on? Great. Our, where will it go next? Um, I'll send it to the town manager and um, ask him to send it to the town council for approval. Hey, congratulations, everyone. We did. Yay. Yay. <laughs> we all, we've worked on this for so long. So Yay. I guess I guess procedurally, um, say, so it wouldn't be on the agenda, of course, for like this coming Monday it would have to be like at the end of the month. But if, if it would make sense to have DAC look at it too, just because I would hate for it to get sort of prolonged. Like if DAC hasn't officially weighed in, then it could get referred to TSO and then back around and just take a long time. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I realize DAC, they only meet once a month and I think they canceled their meeting for next week. So it wouldn't even come back to them until March, but. Well, this is still our document, right? If they want to no, go and create mm -hmm. their own. I mean, if they want to go in ahead and amend it, they're more than welcome to, and then it would be a joint document on their behalf. But hmm. I think we we got to this point to the best. No, I'm comfortable ability, with think, what. Yeah. yeah, I'm comfortable with what we did. Yeah, I think it's just, um, you know, if the town was going to adopt them as like town. Right, guidelines. right. Well, yeah, I think if the right, town does so. anything, they do need to do that. But yeah, this is yeah. just us. That's yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Guilford. Welcome. Okay. All right. So, um, do we? So, yes, we can move on to the next item, which is um, looking at the parking restriction recommendations. Do we have a paper copy of those? So, I have the guidelines from that um, the town manager. Oh that um, Guilford had sent to the town manager um, on March 19, 2021. That's a document. And um, I can um, share, I can screenshot that if we want. 
Mm -hmm. Let me just pull up the document. So in review, what is the purpose of our reviewing? What is what is it that we want to do with this, Tracy? I think the idea with it coming back to us is because it had been in, I mean, my thinking was that it had been in Guilford's original proposal that went to TSO. Um, and and about and looking at parking and restricting parking and somehow it got dropped from TSO's document and I, I just feel like it's important to have some guidelines for some of these high volume roadways and these um, arterials these network these major links right and we talked about it both from a safety standpoint in terms of you know people parking on the side of the road and it's also important for um, cyclists yeah. And people walking on the shoulder of some of these roads that don't have sidewalks and things. So um, Guilford had originally brought it to us to the TAC, you know, back before COVID. I remember talking about it at the police station community room and um, it seemed like it made a lot of sense to me. And so, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Guilford, I don't know how important it seems to you and what your current practices are with, um, <laughs> you know, dealing with people parking on these arterials. So but it just, it seems handy. Can't um, you're it. muted. So it's, the issue is, is that the people who write the tickets won't write tickets unless there's a rule on their signage that says you can't park here. So even though a lot of the rental properties that are on the major roads have parking plans that say they're not supposed to park on the road, they park on the road and block the of bike course. lanes and shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but then, they, then the police won't write a ticket because there's no sign saying that. So the, the goal is, is to just get these guys off the main roads so they're not parking alongside the main roads. So have you bought a lot of no parking signs? Or yeah, so there'll be a lot of no every, parking signs. Yeah. So for the enforcement, would it both have to be the, the rule as well as the signs? Because mm -hmm. I thought, I mean, there's so many arterials, right? And so you would not have to sign the whole things. Like I thought the rule was gonna be that you could only park where there's, it's where it's signed for parking and you couldn't park otherwise. But if you're not Correct. putting, yeah. So, I mean, right. they're not really in, I mean, the ticketers aren't really insisting that you have signs like on every art major road are they if if we have a pol if there's a policy in place we're hoping we can get by with placing a sign at the beginning and the end of the no parking ah, okay. section that saying makes sense. no parking this section sort of like the state right. highway does mm -hmm. no parking on state highway and that will be enough for the, the ticket and, but we'll see there might be some additional signs like for really long stretches you might have to have some at every intersection um but we're, the goal is is not to have a no parking sign every 100 feet or 150 oh, feet sure. down the road. Yeah, no, of course not. Could we, could that, we put it, make it incumbent on the property rent, renters to provide the rentees with the the knowledge on what you know what to do? Like, can we put it back on them rather than on the town? Well, supposedly it is on them. Mm. I was just I, thinking through the rental registration system, it could be required that it's part of the uh, leases. Yeah, I was. That's true. Yeah, you could put it as a line item in the lease. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it it is. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in the lease as well. But um, there's no authority for the zoning people to write parking tickets. So then they can only go and say, well, we're not going to renew your, we're not going to renew your uh, rental permit because your people are violating the parking rule. But then the people say, well, we'll make sure they do it right this time. So what really needs to happen is the police just need to show up and see it parked illegally and ticket it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, it's kind well, of I, mean. I mean, in my neighborhood, I've been concerned with the snowfall about the sidewalk accessibility, but one of the issues is even that vehicles, like some of the rental properties that have very densely parked cars, that with the snow, they don't always have quite as much room. And they never actually like having 
to like stack them deep on a driveway anyway. Um, so in my neighborhood, there's been cars like that are parked on the sidewalk. Um, but then there's also been cars that are parked where the driveways are sort of short and the vehicles are long and maybe people aren't parking in the garage or whatever. And the vehicles are actually the back ends of the vehicles are like hanging over the sidewalk or completely blocking the sidewalk. So I don't know. Yeah. Does that stuff, do those kind of issues, do they, with, with parking on the sidewalk, does that go to inspection or does that go to the police? Go for Gino. It can go to either one. Okay. But then the, the, the zoning people can't write parking tickets. Right, mm -hmm. no, I understand. But they can write warnings and stuff, you know. They can write, yeah, but then, I mean, you're, you're it gets touchy. You're dealing with people's li livelihoods here, not just the people violating the rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I pulled up the memo. I guess you guys can all see it. So this was the memo that um, Guilford had sent to the town manager back uh, a year ago. And the part that I had remembered is this section four ne under next steps where it says restrict parking on arterial roadways to um, s s designated parking spaces only. This will keep the vehicles from parking on bike lanes and shoulders. Um, and there are actually 25 roadways that, that will affect. So, so actually, um, Tracy, I'm th just thinking like, yeah. is there a way for us to find out what they do at like other, you know, small towns with our stations? institutions such as I mean Gorham, Maine or um, Essex Vermont, you know UVM uh -huh. like what their sort of policies are as a town to try and uh, keep these you know, I'm just thinking like uh, you know New England or Northeast cities, towns where there's a large state institution and a reasonable sure you know, reasonable number of uh, in-town rentals rather than on, you know, on-campus living. Maybe. So, I mean, I guess one question, Marcus, is that in some towns, right, a lot of the major roadways, the arterials would be all state highways. Mm -hmm. So then wouldn't the state then have like jurisdiction over the parking? And they could just say like, no, kind of what Guilford's saying is you could just sign it at the beginning of the end. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Something. I'm just, I'm just yeah. wondering. You know, like, I'm trying to think of um, similar. I mean, you know, like stores is not going to be a reasonable place no. to kind of compare to. But like, what other places are have a similar situation? Right, small town, large university, mm -hmm. reasonable amount of off-campus living. What does that look like? So I mean, for the way I, I'm a little confused. So the way that you explained it is um, partially the reason you didn't follow up with this was because because the police won't deal with this unless there are there's signage, and so would us, Pat, you know, um, doing these criteria help help you in some way? Sorry, I can't hear you. All right. If we bring it up again um, and push it forward to the council again, they can say, no, we won't, don't want to deal with it. Or we can just keep bringing it up to them and saying, this is really something we want to do. And it's really important and we need to do it. Okay. It got dropped last time because the two counselors were really trying to deal with parking on side streets more than they were other places. So they were trying to accomplish something, but not attack the whole elephant at one time. Okay. So, so, so then, um, so our next steps might be just to push this one piece forward then, is that? Yes, because they actually, they actually did come up with what their policy will be, but then they just left out the major roads. Okay, so this is still wanting then. Because um, I feel like we did, we did look at this and we did all agree on it. So perhaps we can, yeah, Tracy, with this, just, I, I don't know what the whole memo ha had in it. But, oh, sorry, I can go back. But but the question is, do we just want to take this piece, this part out? I don't, I don't know. 
So wait, hold on, let me, um, oh, this is, let me share it again. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So um, I'm sorry, um, Kim, so what were you proposing? So, um, I mean, a lot of these things I've already gone through, right? So, um, so we don't, we just want to take out, so what piece, what are the pieces? Do you want to highlight the pieces that we do want to just continue to push forward? I mean, I think that it would be, I feel like um, TSO adopted some of these when they were looking at how they, they developed guidelines for what to do when they receive parking on street parking requests and that they included a number of the related components you know, in terms of sight lines and things like that, in terms of what they would say about the requests. It was just that that one piece got dropped. So number four. I sort of see this as being, yeah, the number four. So I, I sort of see it as being um, just something could be brought just separately. It doesn't even have to be in the framework of these, you know, recommended roadway widths and parking, which again, TSO and then the council have already approved. It could just be like restrict parking on arterial roadways. Yeah. And here and, is the and list, and this is why. Right. Um, and we have, we, I mean, we, I think at the end of this document are all of the actual um, streets that this rule would affect at this moment. Is well, that actually, yeah, I had a question for Guilford about that. Um, so I know, Guilford, you had included, I think, with the original memo. I'll stop sharing, but I think you had included like a spreadsheet that had a list of the arterials. I did. And of course, it's helpful to not have it in you know a spreadsheet form, but maybe just to list them. But then you had also mentioned in some of the meetings that there are certain roads that in the town's database, they're clad as arterials so that they receive higher priority for maintenance routine the roads finally per se and so i guess instead of looking to the town's database the town's database of the streets and the street segments and how each of the roads are classified maybe we just have a list of the roads and say these are the roads that this restriction should be placed on or something and just stay away from the database <laughs> what do you guys think of that It does seem more straight. Gilford. So how many roads are there that, so how many roads are there that are not functionally arterials that are listed in the database as arterials just so that they have priority maintenance? Um, well, like I think Lincoln Avenue is uh, okay. listed as an arterial so it gets priority maintenance. Um, I don't think we want to list Lincoln <laughs> in our, <laughs> until- well, That would <laughs> solve the problem. <laughs> There'd be no parking. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but um, no. <laughs> so I was actually looking for my list. Um, um I don't. Know I, I, I have the spread. I have the spreadsheet. Of, I have the spreadsheet version. I think. Hold on. But um, it was from that same when you circulated it. Oh actually list the list i have it only has local roads huh that's weird so i do not there have you. the list that has a list of arterials is there another tab on that list um oh wait sorry i have a different list too let me open that one Yes, okay, I have the list here. I'll pull it up. It's this is the list. It was two separate um, documents actually. So, so these are collectors, um, arterials, and principal arterials. So then like, you know, fear, fearing, fearing Hills Road, um, North Whitney, so the ones at the top that are kind of like collectors are the ones that are the ones that are open for um, some type of interpretation. Um, okay. Most of the other ones, you would say those are the, the main routes and there shouldn't be parking on them, but 
Redgate Lane kind of shoots through a neighborhood and they consider it their residential street. Um, so those, those right there are the ones, the top nine are the ones I would say are ones to think about. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't, I don't think we would want to be, I mean, even fearing, right? So like I live down near downtown and people do park on Pomeroy. And People things. don't park on fearing now. So well, so there's a university end of fearing, right? With the meters. Right. But those are clearly marked and they're not but they're the but don't it people, isn't work. there over, even there, isn't there like overflow residential parking on fearing? You're allowed to park on fearing. There is, no, but um, I've never seen, I don't, I don't, oh, anyone I don't know. I see some people. <laughs> There's no um, restrictions on fearing, I don't think, with parking. I think there is on one side only. Yeah. But see, right. I mean, no, that's... I think, I think you're right. Yes. Um. I mean, no, most the, of those, uh, most of those nine are mostly in neighborhoods, and that's why right. you, they could be thought. Well, maybe no, we don't include those. But Amity Street's the main road in and out. Bridge is the main one. Yes. The, the last group are, are really kind of. Yeah, those need to. The only I, one I, would I was wondering uh, about about um, about the middle group is Shays. Aren't there aren't there some parts of Shays where people park? No. Shays is not safe to park on, really. Um, because I mean, you're going from 116 right over to the towns. I mean, the South Common. And um, yeah, I mean, I thought when we did that walk that there were people parked on Shays, but not. But I don't know. I drive that way a lot. It's a thoroughfare, and it could be. I mean, if you get right towards the south common i mean there could be a little bit parking over there but there's really not space to park very much on shays it's yeah, pretty narrow it winds and um the traffic is fast mm -hmm. most most so. of the parking on places like shays or um or uh, uh the group above, above middle street most of the times i see people park there it's it's uh, people that in the, working in the trades right okay um, you're right, then once you get down along the common, if there's an event at the church or something like that, then there's right. you know, people parked everywhere. <laughs> sure. so it's Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, people need to be uh, more cognizant. But um, I think that those other, the other two ones, I mean, I guess I would leave collectors off the list and I would just say the minor materials and those principal materials and I mean I really don't think people should be parking on those streets they all have a lot of traffic outside of I mean so if you take something like Main Street right so in the center of town there is parking on Main Street obviously so that would be an exception. So it would be except for where it's marked for parking. And then parking on Main Street, it goes down to like the Emily Dickinson house. And then there's no parking. Oh, it actually goes past um, tr uh, Triangle, right? So. Um, no, it, it. Well, there's some parking like down if you go to the pizza place and the. Yeah, right there at Triangles where the, it stops. The framing place and stuff like that. They have on-street parking, though it's a little bit, I think it has like a bulb out or something. Right near the old railroad station. Yep, right right where you can pull in for the pizza place. There's a parking right, there. That's, that's what, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it seems like um, we're all agreeing, at least, um, at that the minor arterial through West Street are roads that should be included. And it seems to me that the top nine ones are, you know, also it seems to me that those are something that the council has been dealing, you know, counselors have been dealing with and seem to want to deal with parking on that themselves. But um, I think we pretty unanimously agree that those last ones are <clears throat> appropriate. 
for that um, ban parking ban. So um, do we want to, Tracy, for the next meeting, maybe we want to draft, draft um, a memo or a document um, with that list and those, um, the list of streets and those, um, the point, the, you know, that point number four on it. Yeah, um, yeah, we could do that. Um, I mean, Guilford, what do you think? I mean, we agree that's a good idea. I feel like Guilford might have enough to bring it forward as is. I don't, I mean, it's important for us to do a lot more, I'm just. Well, if you, if you wanted to vote and say you agree with those yeah. streets, we can send something forward with those streets. I think we could send something forward. I mean, um, I guess looking back at the original, like the PDF of the original memo, I mean, one of the things I would mention too here about restricting parking on the arterial roadways, I would mention that it's not just about the bike lanes, it's also about pedestrians who are walking on the shoulders of the roads as well on those streets. Like for example, I think about like along um, Route 9 and things, Route 9, like near Belchertown, Belchertown Road side and stuff. So, um, you could say I mean, you have to you have to have a pretty big shoulder to do that. But there are, I mean, are even cases along say like um like East Pleasant Street where there is no sidewalk and you know some you of those say, sometimes people are stuck. You could say to accommodate bike traffic, comma. And in some cases, pedestrians. Well, we, you guys are meeting next yeah, Thursday. Meeting, so why meeting not again next week. Yeah. I think we could get something together for that meeting and then we can just approve it as a council and hand it off to um, Guilford, right? Yeah. I guess I would, yeah. If somebody else can take the lead on that, that would be great. I'm going to be I'll out of town that. for a few days. And it seems pretty clear. And I'll Guilford will just provide a final list. Yeah. So for the streets that we're saying, like Main Street and so on, um, do we, we don't need to specify like the beginning points or end points. We could just say those streets except where parking is signed to be allowed, right? So like such as, you know, we could give an example like such as in the downtown area or village center or something. Okay. Okay. Okay, moving along. So the next so I, yeah, the next yeah. agenda item is the um tax the memo. memo. And I'm sorry, and I am working on the memo and life has just been busy. My kids have been homesick and things are crazy. And but we are meeting again next week. Yeah. And uh -huh. so my plan is to send a copy. Um, again, I'm going to be out of town for like three or four days. So my plan is to send a draft around and then we can talk about it at the meeting. And I mean, Kim, I know you were really interested in this too. If you were interested, I could send, or if anybody else, you know, I could send around a draft to a small group. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I, if you wanted, because I, I, I have a lot on your plate. If you want to send me, um, what you have, and I can work on it and then sure. circulate it to the group. And then okay. we would have it to talk about it Thursday. That would be awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're through our agenda, our main part of our agenda. Ray. Do we have any other topics? I had a couple things I wanted to ask about, um, but anything else big? No. Okay. Um, we're all good. Great. So um, one thing I wanted to just bring up, I guess it could have been under announcements, but this is, but this has been coming before TSO. It was one of the items that was rolled over from the previous council is that there had been a request at some point to look at, as some other towns have done and is allowed under state statute to reduce the speed limits like throughout town is to say that Amherst is a community where you have reduced speed limits throughout town. Um, and I had heard a few counselors talk about this last time and it had never come to us, but 
I think TSO may be taking that up and then it might come our way. And at the TSO meeting, um, somebody was saying, Guilford, that I guess maybe a member of your staff or a few people presented on this at some point. Does that sound familiar? Yes, we've been asked about it before. Okay. And so have you presented to a council or something before on it? We talked briefly about it. Oh, all right. I mean, it may well, the one thing to remember is that it only applies to roads that do not have posted speed limits. Right. Okay. So you're yeah. going to go down from 25 to what? No, I think it would go down to 25. Yeah. Because they're right now 35. Th 30 is the de facto speed right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't 30 the speed or is it 25 in densely settled areas under statute? You have to actually post the densely settled. You have to, settled. yeah, I know you have to say, but what is the speed limit in densely settled areas? Is that 25? The, the, the one thing, the one thing it does allow that is not doable now is if the road's not posted, um, you can't use radar to actually write mm. the ticket. But if you pass this and you accept this, um, then you can run radar to enforce the 25. Yeah, I think the town's got low enough speed limits already. So, Personally. Well, I'm, I guess I have concerns about if you pass something like this and then you don't actually have enforcement. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's my point. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, anyway, it will, it will come our way at some point, I think. So right now, TSO is really focused on that parking permit proposal because there's just a lot of elements to that. Um, so um, one other th quick thing I had was just um, is the question for a comment for Guilford about the back end parking downtown. Um, when I'm downtown a lot, I mean, it does seem like an many more people now back in but some people still park front in even people people will still park front in right in front of the signs that say back in only <laughs> like directly next to them mm -hmm. um but one thing i've noticed i mean so one thing is that the main way that people will park front in is by going people who are southbound will go across the northbound lane and like slide in and I actually saw somebody, a vehicle even signal once, you know, when it was a really busy afternoon downtown and they were signaling like to turn left to like do that and go across the northbound lane. Um, so it did make me think if there was some kind of like, um, not like a real barricade, but at least like a visual barrier or something like in that vicinity and not of course in the winter or something, but just like some kind of, you know, plastic barrier or something to be like, you can't turn, you can't turn like left into these parking spaces if that would work or, I don't know. I, I, think, I think you're gonna see the, the, the TSO and people wanting to talk about what to do to the downtown street, North Pleasant, South Pleasant. Um, they, know, they know they can have more parking, they know they can have more sidewalk space for dining. So I think they're gonna to try to decide what they wanna do downtown. Okay. They, might decide, they might decide to have all that space for dining and then just have parallel parking again. Because mm. uh -huh. I mean, so, oh, go on. I mean, currently the back-end parking, right? It's approved, I think, until like April or something, the way they've approved it. It is, and then they have to decide what to do. they're gonna do, but it'll, they can also do an extension if they need to. But there, there's never been like a public hearing or anything about it, has there? Do you know? There, there it's was not a permanent. Public... Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, Go it's ahead, interesting. Mark. Like going to well, we were just up in Portland like the other week, and the amount of like on street, uh, Maine, not Oregon, uh, but. Um, the amount of like on street dining that's still going on in the you know mm. in the depths of winter up there was pretty wow. impressive you know everyone's kind of got solo stoves with burning wood or um the heat lights going on and yet you know all the way down here in lowly massachusetts we've shut everything down and gone to town on it so it's it was just kind of a curious thing like how i guess 
you know maybe they're more hardy types up in maine <laughs> but uh, i mean everyone walks around here with a uh, canada goose jacket on anyway so surely they could sit outside for five more minutes so. anyway so yeah the other thing that comes up downtown a lot now andy steinberg brings it up at almost every meeting where they're talking about parking garages and so on is about reversing uh north prospect street to have um north prospect street like the people if people are trying to get to the current parking lot behind cvs or if there was to be a garage back there the idea was that people would enter on the amity side and then um go through that way and that it would be easier instead of going through the little alleyway next to cvs that they would see it better and go more it would certainly be uh, safer Sort of, I guess. But, but anyway, we... I mean, I'm expecting that that will come. I mean, one issue is that now that you're we're making things like one way parking and things like at the Kendrick Park end, like you you still want people who live in those neighborhoods to still be able to get where they need to go to. So I'd be a little hesitant to change the direction for the whole length of it or something. But but we'll see. I would, I will expect that that will come up sometime, so, okay. So is that it, Tracy? I, I yeah, we covered what we had, Good. so. And we voted on something and it's going forward and we'll vote next time too and <laughs> yay. Well, okay. Good evening. Second. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much, Kim. Have a nice you. weekend. Good, Good luck with the ice storm. <laughs> Good luck with the storm. All right, Tracy? take care. Tracy. Thank, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Kim, what's Bye. up? Um, will you, I need that memo that you had tonight and that list, the this memo that's- I, Oh, I, the one that, sorry, the one we're yeah. still sharing. I will send those to you, sure. Can you send that these to are, me? Yeah. These are just the ones, I'll actually CC Guilford too in case he has any updates, okay? Okay.